one of the most warmest and welcoming colours on our planet is the colour orange. So which orange animals have I purchased to be shown in today's video? and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So this is the second episode of our Animal Haul video series, all based on colour. If you are new here, I'll tell you quickly, I popped up a community tab poll for you guys to vote which colour of animals you would like to see in what order. And this is all based on a huge unboxing I had done behind the scenes. The most popular of choice was blue, which was the previous video. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out. The second color with the biggest amount of votes was this warm and welcoming orange that we're gonna be showing today. Now you're in for a treat today, guys, because there was actually four animals that were orange that I can show off today. But before you carry on this video, hit that pause button, go back and check out the blue. Why not watch all our animal haul videos in order? Okay, so here is our first enclosure for our first species shown on the orange video. Could you guys guess what may be housed in this setup? It has lots of rotten wood and leaf litter, and if you guessed isopods, you were right. This is the Pacellionides pruinosis orange. And these were purchased from Dubia Pool. Now Dubia Pool is a great live food dealer that I deal with regularly. I'm not sure if he knows I have a channel or not, and that doesn't matter. I still like to review him and buy stock from him all the same. So as you can see, they have a mixture of different oranges. They have some that have that more shine to them, and you have others that look like they're almost dusted in icing. They have that kind of powdered look almost as if it's over the orange coloration and I'm guessing that's where they get their powdered orange uh, common name from. And they also have little red eyes which I think is super super cute. So I only purchased 10 of these from Dubia Paul and the reason for that is because they are absolutely prolific breeders. If you want a nice pod that you can breed readily at home these are the type of guys to do it. You can buy them dirt cheap, you can pick up a, a, a colony of 50 or more at a really, really cheap price for the same price that maybe you can even get one or even, not even one isopod of certain other species. But although they're common and although they're cheap, the orange variation is not something that I currently had in the realm and I just really wanted to get these guys in. Now what's cool about them is they're very active as you can see they're searching around their enclosures and these guys can be a little bit of escape artists so please be careful when you put your ventilation holes in. One other thing to take note is they will hide eventually. So right now they are explorative but in time these guys will settle and they will hide but if you ever want to see them don't panic. Come along at night time and they'll probably be out come along at feeding times they will certainly be out and if you're doing any maintenance or lifting up hides in the enclosure you will see these guys scuttle around trying to get into a new hiding spot they're really really active really really pretty and really cute now there are small species of isopod only hitting about a centimeter maybe just over uh, in some cases so they're really small really dinky but really really cute and I cannot wait for these guys to continue to produce. They are excellent to use in bioactive vivariums if you keep um, amphibians or some more humid kept reptiles perhaps. Amphibians and reptiles are not something I deal in but I, I know that these guys can do well in that kind of tropical or subtropical environment. They are quite hardy though, they, they will be forgiving for some dry spells but make sure you have at least a part of the enclosure kept moist at all times. So I hope you enjoyed seeing our Porcelionides prunosis orange as the first of our species in the orange video. And now we'll be moving on to something different. 
So here is the enclosure setup for the next animal. So it's very similar to an isopod setup. There's a few more hiding spaces in there, deeper substrate, a lot of leaf litter, a lot of bits and bobs. I even added some dried banana leaves just for a cool rustling effect. Now I know that these animals will be crawling around and I will hear that crunch of the dried banana leaf when I know they're active. So what do we have then? If we look down here, we have L. fenestrata. Do you guys know what L. fenestrata are? If not, let me explain. They are Lucihometica fenestrata, and that is a species of glow spot roach. So they are cockroaches. Now you might be thinking, why? Why have you chosen them under orange? They look a little bit ivory, a bit black, a bit beige. Although there was slight orange coloration on some of the heads, that can't count, surely. Well, what you're looking at are females and potentially juveniles. Wait until you see a male and you will see exactly why I've chose these for orange. One will pop up in just a moment. Ready? There. Did you see those two little orange dots? They look like egg yolks sat on top of the roach's head. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a male of the L. fenestrata. Now there are a few different species of glow spot roach and this particular one does not come up in a hobby that often. Now I have to take a moment to appreciate the roach that we've just seen here. Look at that. Now for those of you thinking, oh my god, you've got an al albino roach, I don't. This is a freshly molted roach and it's something you don't see on YouTube that often. It's that freshly molted that it is pure white. But in time it will darken and take on the coloration of its siblings here. I just had to show it off though because it was truly a beautiful looking roach right now. And it was very inquisitive too for a freshly molted animal. As you can see it will start climbing the enclosure here. <laughs> Now I believe this is a male because I can see the spots on it, um, so it should take on those little orange egg yolks. But back to what I was saying uh, prior to this, this particular species is not seen in the hobby anywhere near as much as some others of the genus. I'm not qu quite sure as to why that is, um, but I just saw them and thought I really want to give these guys a go. Now, they're called glow spot roaches because in the wild, those spots do actually illuminate. Unfortunately, we haven't managed to get this to happen in captivity. This is something that happens in the wild and we believe is due to uh, a certain fungus or a certain bacteria in the um, plants and other well anything that they eat they're cockroaches they will go for anything they will eat dead insects they will eat poo they will eat all sorts of interesting things um, and where they are from i believe that is what causes the um, spots to glow now you can see it said lots on the label um, these were purchased from isopods online and i tell you what this is the first time from purchasing from Icepods online. I got quite a big order off them and they've been fantastic all the way. Now they said they weren't too into their roaches but they were constantly breeding which is why I just asked for a breeding uh, culture and they really did me proud here in the amount they gave me for the amount that I paid. So you guys really must go and check out Isopods online. They have a website, although you can't purchase direct from the website like you could from some other retailers, you can simply pop them an email, which is what I did, and they stayed in contact with me all the way through. They wanted to know whether everything uh, whether everything arrived safe and well. Uh, they let me know when they were posted. They let me know the details of postage. Um, and we discussed my order back and forth through emails and they were just fantastic. And they are people that I'll certainly be buying from again. Now I've actually cut into the next one. We've got a new enclosure here. Now this looks very similar to our first and that is because it is also for isopods. And this is the A winneri orange standing for armadillidium winneri orange so this is a color morph of your standard armadillidium winneri and these were also purchased from dubia pool like our original isopods now i think this is a wonderful color morph striking orange 
but dressed in five rows of creamy to white spots. Now people often mistake these for the Armadillium klugi or klugi as the original colour morph is similar but you can tell the difference by the rows of spots. So your uh, Armadillium klugi or klugi will have three rows I believe it is whereas these have five. Now they are a medium sized isopod and I think their beauty is something that you can impress your friends with. Now they're not the fastest of breeders but they can soon take off with enough time given. And if I'm correct, these guys come from Corfu in Greece. Now this clip here, I wish I took longer footage for because you could actually see the mouth parts moving. And I'm gonna be honest, this particular clip is the first time I've seen moving mouth parts on YouTube at all. Now here we have one molting and the fascinating thing about isopod molting is it's very different to things like tarantulas. A tarantula will molt in one piece leaving it totally vulnerable for a while till it hardens up isopods have mastered this to a t no pun intended they molt in two halves so the back end will come and then the front end leaving only half of their body a little more vulnerable how cool is that gives them enough strength to escape predators now I've got to say I am absolutely loving these uh, Winari Orange. I think the coloration is truly beautiful and I love Armadillidium anyway. I call them my tanks and that's because they have that more uh, robust, brutish kind of look to them in comparison to other isopods. If you look at how stocky they are considered uh, compared sorry, to the Porcelionoides that we showed earlier in a video, it's quite an impressive difference. At least I think so. You can see as well they're very clumsy isopods and watching a clumsy animal is adorable. I don't care whether you're into isopods or not, you've got to admit watching an animal do a topsy-turvy is absolutely hilarious. Oh, I love this shot, nice and crystal clear, but we will actually be moving on to a new animal. Before we continue this video, did you know that Bugrounds is affiliated with the Spider Shop? So when you next need a stunning new tarantula, some healthy live food, well-needed equipment, or just in the market for something unusual, please head over to the Spider Shop via my personal and unique link in the description below. This won't cost you anything extra, but it gives me a little back in return for your loyalty. Thanks guys, now back to the video. So looking at this enclosure, you probably think it's incredibly basic. It's just damp substrate, a few bits of leaves I chucked in for a look, and those three white dots. So what are the three white dots? They're not eggs, they're not anything spectacular, they're actually just a few grains of rice. And the animal is the orange springtails, Billabella bruinare. Now I got these also from Dubia Pool, and it's a starter culture of saying 25 plus on here. Now 25 plus is because nobody's going to sit there and count individual springtails, it's an approximate and I've probably got a few more than that in here. So you may think springtails are not that exciting, why am I showing them off? Well guys, they're freaking orange, right? They are so so cool and they do differ from a lot of your standard white tropical springtails that you get. I mean, look at this, look at the beauty of this tiny little animal. Now I've got to admit, taking macro shots was not easy with these guys, so I do have to apologise that some of the footage isn't great, but I think I got a few good shots in here. So they'll do well in a warm, moist substrate, and they break down any waste such as frass and mould. Now the rice that I've put in there will start to mould and they will start eating it over time. But I've got to be careful not to put too much in because we don't want too much for them to handle. The more they grow, the more orange they tend to become, which is even more cool about these guys compared to the white ones. Uh, they're great microfauna to add to your terrariums or bioactive enclosures because they will keep it clean. And having orange ones are going to have a really cool, pleasing look to your terrarium or vivarium. These guys are going to not only clean everything up, but they are going to give that splash of colour too. Now, 
If you want to include these in dart frog enclosures or spiderling enclosures, they are probably going to get eaten. And being much more expensive than your standard white springtails, I don't really recommend that. But I wanted these guys to breed on. Now I saw a lot of traders got these at the same time. So I wanted to snatch them up before they disappeared and breed them myself so that I can continue lines for sale in the future. Hopefully at next year's BTS if I can do well with them. Now I don't want to outcompete other sellers, it's just that they will sell out fast and I will only be selling surplus stocks. I am not a business, I'll just be selling what I have spare. So hopefully we will have these guys prepped for next year. I hope you have enjoyed watching the four species shown in today's orange video. Look at this guy, absolutely adorable. So it's been a few weeks now and we've had no casualties. We haven't had a singular isopod death um, from our orange. As far as I'm aware, I haven't seen any roach deaths and they're actually quite noisy at night. I might have to expand their enclosure earlier than expected because they are rustling against the sides in the evenings. And it's quite disturbing when watching TV, at least for other people in this house. For me, I find it quite calming. As for the springtails, they are doing fantastically. I haven't noticed any signs of breeding yet, but you're not really gunning with springtails until you've had a proper baby boom. These guys are still tiny. Their enclosure is pretty large for the amount that I've got in there, but no deaths, happy, healthy eating. So that's fantastic. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please pop me a thumbs up. Please give me a comment below and let me know. And which color is coming next week? You'll have to wait and see, or you can cheat and look at my community tab. So, see you guys next week. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.